Okay, so welcome back everyone. We start with the afternoon sessions. Uh, the first speaker is Valerio Vitale here, who uh, will show you the how you can sort of fix this problem of uh, coming up with good projections to Vanier analysis system. And so his talk will be about Vanier 90 and the STM method, and it will be a mixed like lecture with some hands-on tutorials there. And so please, Valeria, thank you for, for coming and the floor is yours. Thank you, Antimo. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Yeah, so today's tutorial is about uh, SCDM and how uh, this can be used in conjunction with uh, Banyo 90. Um, my talk is going to be the first part, more a recap of what uh, Lin Lin told you yesterday. Um, and then We'll have a hands-on part of about uh, roughly an hour. Um, and after this talk, which is just a, a way of seeing how SEDM can work in conjunction with uh, Banya 90, Jun Feng will show you how to uh, automize everything with, with AIDA. Right, so this is just a brief uh, recap of yesterday and of these days, you should now be familiar with uh, all these equations. Uh, but basically, if you have isolated bands and you want to vanderize isolated bands, you have to uh, find a gauge. Um, and if you wanted to maximize localize vanderize function, this gauge is fixed by uh, minimizing this spread function. Um, and in a simple case where you have um, isolated bands like a semiconductor or, or an insulator um, and a small number of bands, this is uh, achieved quite simply. So you first start with some initial projection, um, you set some initial functions, right, or localized function, and you project uh, your conditional states of this function and you create this uh, matrix. And you can create this uh, localized uh, function in this way. You do a loading of normalization and this is basically your uh, initial guess for your uh, new matrix. And uh, as you can see, this works quite robustly. So for a simple system and a few number of bands, uh, isolated bands, you don't really need to know the initial projection. And there are, of course, more complicated cases, but basically, if you start from uh, four S orbitals in the middle of the bond here for silicon, for example, or if you start from four S like random functions in your unit cell, eventually you still get to the minimum of these uh, spread functional. So um, that means that the spread function is quite, uh, the minimum is quite shallow, you have a large basin. And you can start from uh, different initial uh, guesses and you will end up in the lower mean. Things are uh, quite different if you want to disentangle bands. Um, the idea is similar, but now you have a larger space. Uh, you don't have a finite, you don't have a, a specific number of uh, uh, bands, but uh, these bands are entangled uh, with others. You have a larger space. But the procedure is quite similar. So you start with a localized number of functions, which is a number of bands that you want to manualize and disentangle. Um, oh. Can everybody hear me at home? Online? Can people hear me online? Okay. Just the microphone closer. Can people hear me over uh, at the end of the room? Okay. And yeah, so the procedure for, uh, for entangled bands is not too much different, but then what you want to do, um, ah, okay, let me okay, just, yes. let me just yeah. look at the screen and other But then what you want to do is to find these states that uh, in this energy window that you want to disentangle that uh, maximize the smoothness of your manifold, the smoothness in K space uh, relative to, to K. And this is what's called the uh, disentanglement. And this is 
uh, a multi-objective uh, optimization problem. Um, so what happens here is that if you start from 4S-like random um, projections, so if you start from 4S to 3 on silicon, which is what uh, chemically uh, your intuition suggests, you find two different minima. Right, so, so you try to vanularize and disentangle these bands and you, you end up into different minima. So here, initial projections do matter. And entangled band is usually the most uh, uh, difficult case and is also uh, one of the most interesting cases right, that you can encounter. So the algorithm that maximizes this uh, smoothness of the manifold is the Sousa Marzari Vanderbilt and is uh, a multi-objective non-complex optimization. So it's, it's uh, highly dependent on, on, on the initial guesses. But there's an alternative method that Lee Min showed you yesterday, which is based on the density matrix and information that you find in the density matrix. Um, and in particular, is based on the QR, uh, the composition with column pivoting of the density matrix, uh, which doesn't have this issue doesn't suffer from the issue and uh, is a one shot uh, algorithm and it's not an iterative algorithm. And it works by looking at information that you already have in your density matrix. Um, so physically, the idea, as Lillian said yesterday, is basically to find what are the um, most representative columns of the density matrix, which in a sense are the, may, the, the columns there are that are um, that overlap less uh, uh, and are the most localized uh, in your density matrix. And uh, in general, if you have a gap or a, a, a semiconductor or, or an insulator, then your density matrix uh, decays exponentially um, with, with the distance between electrons. Uh, but for metal, it's only decay uh, algebraically. So the idea is basically that you find, you use density matrix, which is uh, for isolated bands. The density matrix is basically a projector into the space of the balance uh, state and it's gauge invariance. Uh, and you can represent the density matrix both in terms of your conscious states and your Banya functions. And as I said, it is exponentially localized for um, isolated bands if you have a non-topological uh, systems. And you can think about uh, the columns of the density matrix in these real space uh, representation as some sort of projection of the density matrix onto very localized orbital delta-like functions, right? So you yeah, can create a function phi um, uh, centered on R0, which is basically the result of projecting the density matrix onto a very localized uh, function, a delta function, for example. So, and this would give me a column of the density matrix, right? I think you've seen this picture before, but it's just to uh, show you how this is done um, in, a, in a computer, basically. So you have your density matrix, you discretize in, in real space, and you can write your density matrix like this, writing standard to uh, conscious orbitals. And this is basically what you get if you have a simple uh, P-like orbitals. Um, and as you can see, if I choose a column of this density matrix, this is usually a well uh, localized function and this goes to zero uh, distances which are uh, large. Uh, here, for example. And apart from a phase, basically, I have a quite well localized function, which will resemble my P uh, like orbital. So you can see that basically, if I, uh, I can extract this column by just doing a matrix multiplication of this density matrix times a very localized uh, vector, which basically has a whole zero uh, here and just one. At some point, right? So that, that's the original idea. So, you know, what, 
it's more uh, uh, physically intuitive. Basically, you have this density matrix, and the columns are well localized functions. And you want to select the columns that are the most uh, representative in a way of this density matrix. And I can I could choose any random column, uh, but uh, this might not be in a sense uh, linearly independent or so linearly independent. So you want to choose the ones that are uh, as linearly independent as possible. That means less overlap, basically. And the idea is to use this QR with column uh, pivoting, which is exactly what it does. So the QR method is exactly factorizing your density matrix into um, two matrices, Q, which is unitary, and R, which is a, a, a top triangular. And it also spits out a, a matrix, which tells you which are how, the, how to order the columns, such as the first are the uh, um, more linearly independent ones. Right. Um, for generalization to multi bands, it's very easy. It's not uh, really complicated. Right. So for isolated bands, you can basically use the SCDM without any parameterization. So if it's the number of bands that you want to vanilize, it's the same. Um, it's the number of vanilla functions that you want to you obtain. Then basically there are no parameters. Uh, you can still use this idea of a quasi uh, um, density matrix where you uh, use this um, profile function, as Lillian explained yesterday. But this would be just uh, a cutoff, basically, right? Just a, a, a Hindisite function, for example, which sets um, your uh, uh, energy window in the middle of the gap. Uh, so this is really parameter free, and we have tested this idea on many systems, many insulating systems. In, in this particular uh, paper, we, we study uh, eighty-one insulating three D systems, and we found so this is this basically R on the y axis is the difference, the main the, the main error, let's say. Um, the mean error and the max error um, of your bands that are vanilized with the SCDM method and the DFT bands. And here you can see that basically we use the SCDM uh, in isolation, so, so without further doing a, um, an iterative step where we also maximally localize the value function. And then in this light pink here, we also use the SCDM as initial guess to the maximally localized linear function. And uh, there is a little difference in, in reality to the, um, the SCDM only and the SCDM. So the SCDM works already without the uh, extra step of the maximally uh, localization. But maximally localization does help uh, in some cases. So here, the raw K is the different um, finest of, of the grid in uh, reciprocal space. So um, it basically tells you uh, the number of points that you have in your uh, K grid. So small rho K means uh, high density. Um, and you can see that the results improve. So basically you have uh, the error, uh, for example, here you have basically 93% of all the systems, so say 75 and 81, that the mean error between the vanillaized function, the vanilla interpolated function, the FD, is below the two MEP. So, but things are slightly more uh, complicated if you want to disentangle bands. And then in this case, um, basically you have two parameters. Um, in reality, you have three parameters that you want to choose. So basically, in your calculation, one parameter is the number of bands, uh, which is not fixed. And then you have these two other parameters, mu and sigma, which define your profile function f. And there are different ways of disentangling bands. For example, in this case, you want to 
uh, bandarize the balance manifold, balance bands, uh, plus some conduction bands. And then you can use this uh, complementary error function here, uh, which basically tells uh, set to zero all the elements in the density matrix that are above some, some certain region, right? But you could also choose something different. You want to basically um, disentangle bands, like for example, only the conduction bands or just D bands uh, in, in copper, for example. And you can use a different uh, profile function. In this case, you can use a Gaussian function, for example. And you still have to define these only two parameters, mu and sigma, which define uh, the center of your uh, Gaussian and, and spread, right? so the uh, region the energy region um, that you're interested in. So how does it work and how do we um, set these parameters, mu and sigma? So the idea is that you, you can do it two ways. One, you can uh, use your uh, uh, chemical intuition and uh, your uh, physical intuition in a sense. You can set mu, if you want to, for example, banderize bands up to uh, this line here. You can set mu around this value, and then a, a sigma, which is um, basically given by the bandwidth of your uh, bands of interest. Um, you can do that, and that doesn't really work well. So if you choose these two parameters uh, intuitively, as, as you would, so basically mu around um, your uh, uh, upper bound of the energy window is sigma such that uh, contains um, the bandwidth of the bands you're interested in, doesn't really work. Um, so we had to come up with a different idea. And the idea to choose mu and sigma in a more reliable way is to use this concept of projectability. So what are the projectability? I think these are um, quite important because John Tang also is going to talk about this. And it's basically the idea of projecting your conscious states onto the uh, pseudo-atomic orbitals in your pseudo-potentials. So these five functions. So in general, it's on localized uh, functions. There are uh, mostly atomic-like functions. But uh, in particular, is, in our case, is to use the information in the pseudo-potential to make everything uh, automatic. So basically, you don't have to choose these uh, five uh, functions, but you extract them from your uh, uh, pseudo potential. And you compute this projection of your uh, constant states onto these um, pseudo atomic uh, orbitals. You square it, you sum all over them, and you get something which is between uh, zero and one. So it's, it's, uh, it's bounded. Um, and these basically give you an information on how different bands project onto uh, these states. So these are, for example, bands that have high projectability uh, and are mostly on the core states, right? So this will have high projectability um, on the, if you have you know, S or P orbitals uh, in your system. And usually these have a high projectability because these bands are pretty flat, right? So if you project your conscious states, these on, will look like as uh, very localized orbitals. And then you have other bands up here where your projectability decrease um, because these will become more and more delocalized. And eventually you have uh, the continuum bands. And so the projectability goes down. Right, to zero. So this is a, just a way to uh, extract this information from something you already have, which is uh, the function in your pseudo potential. And what you do, you do, uh, you basically fit an error function if you want to study, if you want to, for example, uh, manualize bands with your uh, uh, error function. You basically fit an error function to the projectability, and you find a mu and a sigma. And the algorithm that works for most of the materials is to use this recipe. So basically, 
once you feed the project abilities, which is, is what we're going to do uh, in the tutorial as well, uh, the optical, the optimal mu that you find is actually the the mu from the fit minus three times the sigma from the fit, whereas the sigma optimum uh, is the sigma from the fit. So the reason why this works, uh, it's it's in so many materials, it's not uh, super intuitive, but that's um, the reason basically is that you have to find a sweet spot between uh, your spread function. I think my microphone went down. No, it was a noise. Okay. Okay. So basically, you have to find the sweet spot where your spread functional is uh, small, but the error in your uh, interpolated uh, bands is small as well. And here, for example, we plotted these uh, on the left here is the, is the spread functional uh, as a function of mu and uh, sigma. And here is the uh, mean error of your interpolating bands as a function of mu and sigma. And you can see that basically I could use very large uh, mu and large value of mu and sigma. So introduce more and more bands in my optimization. This will, uh, of course, will uh, result in a smaller uh, um, spread function. Because I, have, I have more freedom now, including more bands. The higher in energy, I have more freedom to um, rotate them in a way that I find very localized orbitals. But at the same time, my uh, Vanier interpolated bands error will go, uh, will become very large, right? Here on the right. So basically you have to find um, a way of uh, choosing mu and sigma such that your uh, spread functional is small, but also your uh, error uh, is small. And as you can see here, this is the line where we uh, set mu minus three sigma for this particular system, which I think is the tungsten. But we tested on many, many systems, and this uh, line here where we set mu minus three sigma is, is actually uh, always in this sweet spot of uh, having a small spread functional and a small error. So it's just uh, a, a, a heuristic. Okay, so an example of why this is cool and uh, you know uh, useful uh, and um, can save many hours is, for example, in the carbon nanotube with projection. So if you want to do, if you want to project uh, linearized least bands from a carbon nanotube, um, you need all these projections. If you want to have such a nice uh, vanierization and uh, disentanglement, you will need all these projections. These are all S orbitals in the middle of bonds, right here, and all P Z orbitals, which have, need to be properly oriented according to the curvature of your uh, uh, carbon nanotube. So, otherwise, you don't get this very nice uh, interpolation uh, from man, from man ninety and uh, nice disentanglement. So basically, if you think about it, you have to spend many hours to uh, have this projection right. Whereas in using SCDM, you basically need two blocks, one in the pw to one 90 x where you uh, tell um, that you want to use the SCDM projection and what kind of uh, disentanglement procedure that you want to do, and just this line in the Vanier 90 input, and you get the same result, right? So uh, you can play with mu and sigma, so that's much faster than actually playing with so many projections. So you have only two parameters. But if you don't want to play with mu and sigma, you can use the projectabilities. The projectabilities, according to recipe, give you these two values, right? And uh, you're done. And we tried this for uh, uh, metals and other systems, so over 200 3D uh, uh, materials. 
uh, spanning quite a lot of the um, table, right? And we found that this works pretty well also for disentangled bands. So it's not as good as the isolated bands, of course, but we found that basically you can get for all the systems, well, for 97% of the system, you can get an error that is below 20 MeV if you choose this uh, density of K points. Right? So this is usually what we suggest to use. Um, but with this, basically you can have an error which is below 20 MeV. And usually the error is mostly in the uh, upper bound of, of your, band, of your uh, uh, bands. So this is then being uh, automated thanks to Antimo and uh, Giovanni and Junfeng as well. So we put everything together, Quantum Espresso, Vanya 90 um, databases into AIDA. Right, AIDA, it's a, it's a Python uh, materials informatic platform, which Junfeng will show you how to use in the next tutorial. And you can create this wonderful automated graph where you only thing that you need to give to AIDA is, I think, the structure, right, of a material. And uh, most of the parameters are already set up with through heuristics. Um, of course, you can choose them. You can you can uh, select different K point mesh if you want. But basically, you can feed AIDA with a structure and ask to get uh, a banalization of bands, and then everything is automated through this procedure. And that nice thing about AIDA is also that it gives you this uh, provenance uh, graph automatically generated. So basically every time you can know exactly what kind of calculation you've done, you can redo it. Uh, and basically uh, it's very useful for people that want uh, for fair um, computational uh, methods. So if you want to know more about it, you, you should uh, really uh, attend Jun Feng Chao uh, tutorial next. Right, so summary is that um, we all know that uh, maximum localized uh, linear function or linear function in general are very useful. That there is this issue with uh, uh, initial projections, especially for uh, uh, entangled bands. And that the SCDM overcomes this issue uh, in, in a very simple way. Um, you only need to set up two, to, to define two parameters, three if, if the number of bands, so if you include the number of bands as well. And these two parameters can be um, actually specified for you through an algorithm, through an heuristic algorithm. And it works very well, both for isolated uh, bands and for uh, uh, entangled bands. And we have tested, uh, I think Jun Peng has done uh, other tests as well. And these methods also been then um, extended to uh, spinners as well. So it's not just, uh, um, Block wave function, uh, but also with um, a system with the uh, spin orbit coupling. And as I said, it works quite well. It works particularly well for isolated bands, but uh, it's uh, also very, very useful for uh, uh, entangled bands. Right. So this is uh, an overview. Uh, most of the people I work with uh, in this project, particularly Giovanni and Antimo, who set up all the uh, AIDA framework. Uh, and these are uh, the family. Okay, so that's it for the recap of the SCDM. I think we can start directly with the, with the tutorial, with the hands-on tutorial. So maybe I do a separate record, I forgot. <laughs>